Good morning class. My name is Pam Turner. I'll be the moderator of this morning's lecture. Welcome to another lecture presented by the Tampa class. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Tampa branch was established in the year 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our President, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, He called Moses atop Mount Sinai and He showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure 
and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. And our slogan is Speak the Truth. This morning we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Lawrence Edwards. We'll have a musical selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi and Dr. Jennifer Marshall. And our scripture this morning will be Colossians, the first chapter. And that will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. And our readers are doctors. Um, we have Dr. Darlene Webster and Dr. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> you had Sherry down and Sherry's not reading. <laughs> Sorry about that. We switched it up, guys. Okay. So we'll have Dr. Cynthia Smith read the scripture. She's a reader. And Dr. Darlene Webster. And I'm, I'm, Lawrence, I'm coming back at you for the prayer. Good morning. Okay, you're good to go. Good morning, class. Good morning. 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 That will give somebody, someone, a better insight into the operations of our Heavenly Father and the, the things He has for us in store for us. And with those two words, let's all say. Let my 
from the Holy Name Bible containing a Holy Name <coughs> containing a Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association. I'll be reading Colossians the first chapter. Saul, an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah by the will of Yahweh to Timothy our brother to the, to the sons and faithful brethren in the Messiah which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from Yahweh our Savior, Yahweh our Father and our Savior Yahshua the Messiah. We give thanks to Yahweh the Father of our Savior Yahshua the Messiah praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in the Messiah Yahshua and of the love which ye have to all the sons for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the glad tidings, which is come unto you as is in all the world, and bring it forth fruit, as is that all also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of Yahweh in truth. As ye also learned of Ephes Ephesus, our dear fellow servant who is for you a faithful minister of the Messiah who also declared unto us your love in the spirit for this cause we also since the day we heard of it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual under spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of Yahweh unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim, strengthening with all might according to his glorious power, 
unto the patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption, redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible El, the first cause of all creation. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities of, or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things have been permanently placed. And he is the head of the body, the assembly, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence among all. For it pleased the Father that in him should all full, fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, rather they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now yet he made, now yet he reconciled in the body of his excuse me, in the body of his flesh through that, by present you by present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, ungrounded and unsettled, and be not moved away from the hope of the glad tidings, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I saw and made a minister. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions, afflictions of the Messiah in the flesh for his body's sake, which is the assembly, whereof I am made a minister according to the stewardship which is given to you, to me for you, to fulfill the word of Yahweh. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and generations, but now is made manifest to his sons, to whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the nations, which is the Messiah in you, the only hope of glory, whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Yahweh, in Yahshua the Messiah. Whereunto you I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. That was Colossians, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A welcome. We have some. Some visiting brethren from a few, uh, or just from the, I was going to say a few branches, but no, it's from Arkport, <laughs> not a few branches. <laughs> we have Dr. Bonnie Snyder, the Dean of the Arkport branch, and we have uh, Dr. Michael Polly, um, also visiting brethren from Arkport. We have a returning visitor, visitor. we have um, Abby, is it Peterson? Mm -hmm. Welcome back with us to study. Glad to have you here. <laughs> And as always, silence all electronics if you haven't already. And for our first speaker, I'd like to call on Dr. Michael Polly. I'd like to say good morning to the class. Good morning. Good morning. Super nervous as always, but it's okay. Uh, I am always glad to have anything to say regarding this divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Now that's the difference 
and this what you see illustrated on these charts and you know what's the difference between this school and people going to church you know uh, I was holding a Bible and people walking by you know it looks like I'm on my way to church <laughs> But I'm not, because church, the true church, the true etymological meaning of church is body or assembly. See, but the, they've gone out and created these edifices, you know, these buildings, and they're saying that's the church. But see, you can't go to church. See, we are the church. That's the body. That was the first church that was assembled around Mount Sinai. And see, Yahweh was the speaker. He spoke down to them. Now, that's the same thing that took place on the day of Pentecost, where they were gathered on the day of Pentecost. And see, Yahshua spoke to them. Could we get uh, John 14 and 26? Now this is a school and it's not a church because, see, we come here to learn something. Now, I'm not the teacher. Yahshua's the teacher. You know, all I'm doing is testifying to what I've learned because I have learned something being in this school. And see, we do have a creator and see, he shows it through the creation. And there is a savior. We do have a savior. And the savior did, Yahshua, he did die for us. See, but he, he did, he's not on the cross anymore. See, he resurrected. That's the thing. See, he died on the cross to end the things that were written of him. All these stories of what's in the Bible, what's in the Old Testament, the Old Testament being, okay, read. Did I, for, John 14, 26. John 14, the 26. Okay. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. The Comforter is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a name. His name is Yahshua, because Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. That's the only name that means Yahweh is salvation. As the moderator said about the name, see, Yahweh, that's the true name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. That's the name that we breathe. That's the name that's in us. That's the name that's written throughout the whole creation. If people could just just see. The founder, that's why it necessitates, the founder had this divine vision. See, that's the difference between this school and the religion, what the religious world are practicing. They're practicing religion based on their imagination. They're, re they're reading the Bible, not understanding what it's, what it's talking about, and just interpreting. It says, but uh, uh, the doctor is, is not uh, for private interpretation. That's, that's a scripture in the Bible. I'm not making, you know. And that's the, that, that, that really is what my point is, that this is a divine vision and revelation. And the founder, he said, make me prove it to yourself. See, because he did have a divine vision. And that's what, that's what these charts are to show that, see, so you might come to an understanding about the Bible, about Yahweh, about your Creator, about our Savior as He really is and as He actually exists. See, can't you see where we got voluntary and involuntary things going on right within our own body that we don't have any control over? You know, can't you see these objects or elements just in the, in the space in heaven? You know, just what phenomenal, you know, this earth right now is moving at a tremendous speed you know going around we get we don't even feel it but that's to show you the awesomeness of Yahweh see he said but the comforter which is the Holy Spirit that's Yahshua see read whom the Father will send in my name. See, the Father is going to send them in His name. And that, that's Yahshua. Yes. That's the name of the Savior, Yahshua. Now, we know that the Bible has Jesus Christ in it. They put Jesus in there. But see, that's not the name of the Savior. Jesus, even though the founder used those names and titles, you know, when he first started the, the school, but that's because people were already using that. Mm -hmm. See, the, what, what, you know, the thing about Jesus Christ, what they say is Jesus Christ instituted 
water baptism. They say Jesus Christ instituted, that's in the Bible too, instituted, I mean, not in the, not in the text of the Bible, but it's in, in, in scripts of the Bible where they insert it, where they say the Lord institute the Lord's Supper or Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. Jesus instituted, you know, and it says clearly that he came to fulfill. Could I get, uh, Matthew 5, 17. Okay, finish that, though. I, I know. Okay. Uh, th then there's... Uh, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Okay, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, there's scriptures that the founder... Uh, you have uh, Isaiah 8 and 20. Isaiah 8 and 20, Exodus. Twenty-five and forty. Romans one and twenty. And Hebrews eleven and six. Then I also want uh, John. I'm just writing these so I because I start going haywire <laughs> so, so. <laughs> John 5 39 and Matthew 5 17 now these are the four that are in the first if you don't these these four scriptures are in the first textbook that the founder wrote he put them right at the beginning these four scriptures I would like to get those especially uh, Isaiah 8 and 20 and then Matthew 5 17 and then I'm gonna have my seat hopefully and uh but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay, could you also get uh, John the three and one? Which one would you like first? Uh, John three and one. John three and one. John three and one. Okay, where Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, and he came to Yahshua by night because he didn't want anybody to see him. He came to Yahshua by night. Okay, read. Yahshua answered and said unto him, did you want me to start about that? Oh, uh, yes, let's oh, start at one. That's yes, fine. Yes, okay. There was a man of the Pharisees. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees, they're like the religious leaders that, that, that are now. You know, these, these ministers, you know... Uh, Joel Osteen. Uh, I mean, there's some there's some really prominent ministers, you know. That, but they're saying Jesus Christ is the Savior. Now, what's the difference between they they, they go to these same scriptures? They say. Uh, John 14 and 26 about him being a teacher they go to they go to these same scriptures we're going to but so what's the difference between what the founder brought this school and then what these religious people are saying because we're saying they're not going by what's written in the Bible. They're going by their imagination. They're going by traditions. They're not going by what Yahshua is saying as far as him fulfilling what was written, the law and the prophets, and see, fulfilling all these things that were written of him. And see, that's what Paul, he mentions it in Colossians. I probably won't get there, but it says even the mystery, that's the mystery about Yahshua dwelling in your heart and mind. Okay, uh, John 3 and 1. Okay, um, there was a man of the Pharisees, okay. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Okay, he was a ruler of the Jews. Okay, read. Yes. The same came to Yahshua by night. Okay. And said unto him. And said unto Yahshua, okay. Rabbi, we know. Now he said rabbi. Rabbi is a Jewish term. Yes. Jesus couldn't have been Je Jesus couldn't have been rabbi the name chart Jesus see because there's no J in the Hebrew language no J in the Latin or Greek language so he could Jesus you don't find one rabbi in the country named Jesus you can't find them named Joshua or some of these other Hebrew names 
But you don't you won't find a rabbi named Jesus. OK, but they say a rabbi to show you that he was Jewish. Yes. He, he came to his own. See, he was born under the law. You know, OK, read. A rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come, come from Elohim. Okay, that was my point. See, we know that thou art the teacher. Yahshua's the teacher, not us, not certainly not me, but Yahshua's the teacher. See, he's the one that teaches you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Okay, could we get Isaiah 8 and 20? Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony. Now, to the law and to the testimony. Now, the law is the first five books accredited unto Moses as being a writer. See, not the author, but see, he's the writer. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The first five books of the Bible is accredited unto Moses. But see, Moses, the thing is that I never heard... And I've, I looked at a lot of religions, I'm going to tell you. Seventh Day of Venice, Jehovah's Witness, Roman Catholicism, Islam, you know, Shrine of the Black Madonna, you know, just all these, all these uh, things that people are searching. Yeah. People want to know, because see, he imbued that in everybody to want to know your creator. Just like kids want to know their parents, you know, even if they adopt, well, you've been adopted for 30 years now, I still want to know my mother and father. <laughs> they, you just want to, that, that's what he put in everybody, to want to know our Heavenly Father. And see, Yahweh wants you to know him. That's the thing. He wants you to, that's why he gave this divine vision, so that we might be resurrected in our heart and mind. That's, that's the thing, is to be lifted up in your heart and mind, because that's where the first man fell, in his conscience, in his mind. See, he was darkened. He was condemned. And so it necessitated Yahshua the Messiah to come in and lift the man back up right where he fell, in his conscience in his mind so they can understand something for once for sure okay Isaiah 20 to the law to the law and to the testimony that's the law the first five books of the Bible testimony is the next 34 and guess who the first prophet is in the testimony Yahshua. Joshua. He's a, he wrote the first. See, see how they can't get it. That's why they finally just knocked the Christian doom out. Because they, Jesus is not in the Old Testament. They can't take Yahshua out of the Old Testament. He got a book. That's a book. Right in the Bible. You can't, they can't get around it. The, it to me, it's really something how Yahweh made them pick stuff that was just so obviously wrong. You know, like the letter J. They would pick a savior with the letter J and it's the last letter added to the English alphabet. It was. It was the last. You, this is a school of research. I'm not asking you to take my word for it. I'm telling you things that Yahshua allowed me to understand because even the, the periodic table of elements, you'll see there's no J. There's no element with a J because it was the last letter. All the other elements have letters. And uh, that's a thing. See, to the law and to the testimony. Now, the, the law and the prophets or the Old Testament, that's talking about Yahshua. That's talking about, see, all this, all what he was doing here, all that was written of him. All that was showing that he was going to come in and nail it to the cross. All those circumcision, ceremonies, baptism, supper. You know how they do the Lord's Supper? You know, the Lord's Supper is mentioned in the Bible one time. And it says not to eat it. He said, and the founder says, ye cannot eat it. You know, in some Bible, ye cannot eat it because... The Lord's Supper, see, that's Him supping with you in your heart and mind. It's not, it's not no crackers and grapes. That's what they're doing. It's crackers and grapes. We would be the same way, but I'm just saying we are so fortunate that Yahshua allowed us to understand something about this divine vision and revelation because that's the only salvation there is. There's no other salvation. There's no other Savior. There's no other creator. 
creator. See, he said, I am Yahweh and there is none else. All this is glorifying Yahweh. The whole creation. I'm not trying to yell. I'm not trying to talk. I'm just... It's glorifying Yahweh. And they put that in the Bible. It says, The heavens declare the glory of El. The firmament showeth his handiwork. Don't you see all these? Like I said, these objects, they're moving at a tremendous speed. They're about to have this big uh, eclipse. Yes. You know, they're making a big deal about it. But it does show you that these objects are moving. We're, we're really moving. And, you know, that just, it, it, I keep repeating because it just it blows my mind about how this earth, you know, how he has it, you know, tilt 23 degrees, you know, going, all going according to this tabernacle pattern. Just everything going according to the pattern. You know, the earth is tilted, it's spinning, you know, it's going around the sun. And then you got an object like the moon. It's just stay, it's just still. It's still going around, but it just stays on one one. Side. You know, you got you got uh, these planets like Saturn and with these rings around. It. Have you ever seen those rings? Those are that's rocks and stuff going around. It's just and they're saying they're gaseous giants, but the gas never disseminates. You know, it's just a solid gas if it could be such. You know, and then uh, Uranus. Uranus is tilted on the opposite. See how Yahweh showing? Look, I do all these things. You know, these things aren't. It's it, it's just. I mean, if you get into that that science stuff, it's just it's just amazing the way. You know, even just the baby, the how. You know, just had delivered a baby. The baby has to turn, you know, before he even takes in the breath. So who's doing that? Who's making the baby know when to turn to come out, to come through the, you know, that? And then, uh, you know how you have veins and arteries? Your arteries are the good blood and your veins are the bad blood. Seeing a baby in the feet is just the opposite. The veins are the good and the arteries take away the waste. I said, Yahweh is something else. I tell you, it's, he just showing. That's that's. A, he said, I will be what I will to be. That's how he, he come. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Say, I will give you rest. See, rest unto your soul. See, Isaiah eight and twenty. To the law and to the testimony. Okay. If they speak not according to this word. It is because there is no light in them. See, it is because there is no light. There is no understanding in them. Could I have uh, John 1 and 1, too? John 1 and 1. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. See, in the beginning was the Word of Yahweh. In the beginning was the Word. Now, in the ages and dispensations, it has beginning and ending. See, this is the beginning that, that John is talking about. Not his vision. That talk, John is talking about in the beginning. In the beginning was the word of Yahweh. He said, Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. See, he was set up from everlasting. Isn't that something? He set up from everlasting. Okay, read. He said, in the beginning was the word. Was okay. The, was the word. And the word was with Yahweh. See, and the word was with Yahweh. This is Yahweh Elohim. That's the word of Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh Elohim. That's that's these nine divine attributes, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice, foundation, and power, and strength. See, coming into a set shape and form that you can get an understanding. He can... Mm -hmm. Show up in divine vision. See, Moses was having a on, on this chart, see, showing Moses having a panoramic vision of Elohim. 1490B. That's in the Bible. We're not making this up. See, the, believe it or not, this vision is irrefutable. It's un, now I, You might find plenty of faults with me or scrutinize it, you know, but don't go by that. Go by what the founder brought. You can watch the 1958 videos. You can read his textbook. You can read trans. You go with what the founder, then you'll know what's right, what's what's correct, what's irrefutable. Some things people say, that's so ref you could tell us not to found it because it's refutable. <laughs> 
the, what the founder brought is irrefutable. He said, just like John is saying, in the beginning was the word of Yahweh. That's the word, not the Bible. The, what Christian doom is saying, they're saying, they're saying the Bible is the word of God. See, God is a title on top of it. And they're, they, use, they use God like it's a name. You know, they, that's how, that's how, See, really, what it is, it's the opposition. See, you got the truth. They, and they show that in all kind of stories. I mean, just every children's storyline, just all through. It's just, it's a good and it's a bad. It truly is. See, it wasn't just uh, two mysteries. I, I don't want to, okay, let me finish. Uh, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yah, and the Word was Yahweh. Okay, read. Was Yahweh. All things were made by Him. See, all things were made by the Word of Yahweh. All things were made by... That's why, see, He is the archetype or original pattern of the whole universe. All things were made by by Yahweh Elohim. See him, okay. And without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, read. In him was life. In him was life. Yes. And the life was the light of men. And the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. The understanding, okay. And uh, the 14th verse. 14th verse. And the word was made flesh. See, and the word of Yahweh. See, this, these three are one, and the word of Yahweh was made flesh. See, as Yahshua the son of Nun. See, that's why Yahshua the son of Nun, uh, and, uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See, and then as Yahshua the Messiah. See, Yahshua the son of Nun. See, he's the first book of the prophets. See, Moses led, they said Yahweh brought the children of Israel out, but see, Moses was like the front runner, just like John the Baptist was the front runner of Yahshua the Messiah, see, but it had to be Yahshua to take them over into Canaan's land, because Canaan's land was a type of heaven. See, you had to, you had, this is going by the pattern. You had Egypt, that's like the court round about, then you had the wilderness of Sinai, that's like the holy place, that's why Moses had to take off his shoe. Then you had Canaan's land, that's likened unto the most holy place or heaven. See, can't you see it had to be Yahshua to take them over into heaven just like it has to be Yahshua because see he's the way the truth and the life just like see all the creation came down just like the woman followed the man out of the garden see the woman or the bride or the body has to follow Yahshua right back in to heaven itself and uh, I always enjoy coming to class. I don't enjoy speaking all the time, but <laughs> I do have, you know, Yahshua has sh showed me something as far as divine understanding and, mm -hmm. you know, who our true creator is. And we do have a creator. And we do have a savior. And the savior did die on the cross. The savior was water baptized. But see, he ended water baptism. He's not instituting water baptism. You'd be surprised some of these ministers, they still think, they say water baptism is the only baptism that, he, that was ordered. But it, it's not, it's water but that's not, see John ended water baptism. That was, John's baptism was the last baptism. That was the end of water baptism. Anything after that is a dead work. You can't put water baptism after Yahshua's resurrection. See, because it's a dead work, especially for the Jews. If you were, that's a dead work. You can't be water baptized and you're a Jew after you they had to be buried with the Messiah it was water baptism but Yahshua ended water baptism it was these things but see that's why it has the end see because he fulfilled that he ended those physical ways of worshiping those are physical but see it's the spirit now it's it's resurrected in your heart and mind it's a knowledge and understanding that's why I said even the mystery which has been hid from ages and generation. See, that's the mystery. It's the Messiah in you. That's what they can't see. It's the Messiah in them. That's what they couldn't see on the pinnacle or see at Cornelius. It was the Messiah in them that was speaking. And uh, 
praises to Yasha. I hope you got something out of what was said. And our next speaker will be the Dean of the Art Corps Branch, Dr. Bonnie Schneider. Very happy and glad to be here. Um, Do you have a pocket or a sock to hook? No, I don't have a pocket. I'll okay. um, This is a wonderful teaching. If you're a guest with us, I want you to know you've come to the right place. And you'll hear things here that you won't hear anyplace else. And we ask you that you pay attention and check out the things that you're taught here. You can always ask one of the speakers or you can just check out stuff yourself and know it for yourself and that's what is the only thing that's really required of you around here is to know the thing for yourself. Um, I have a couple things on my mind, obviously, I always do. <laughs> well, you know, I read a transcript when I was first in school. I may have said this here already this year, but um, when I was first coming here, I was reading a transcript from the founder, the one that had the vision of Revelation. And one of the things he said in there is if you believe the things that he was telling us, that you'd have something to think about for the rest of your life. I'm like, wow. And that has proved true. <laughs> I have something to think about. In fact, I guess thinking so many things is hard to... <laughs> um, so I'd like to say uh, greetings from the airport class also. And wasn't it... It's just so good of Yahweh to send Mike to the art port class. <laughs> it was awesome. Ooh, it <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> um, that's one thing. Uh, <clears throat> The other thing is the brethren there. You know, there's a brethren in the art port class now that used to be a member of the Tampa class. Um, Stan Zemba is now in art port. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so I know that, you know, he'd like to say hello to you. So anyway, um, I'll have that. Okay, I want to go to the scripture reading first. I want you to start um, 1 and 12. Colossians 1 and 12. Uh -huh. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light. Uh-huh, and you can, you know, all these things we could expound on. We only have a little time to express the things. So I'm going to skip some of the things, <laughs> but go ahead and read. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? Now it's the Father who has delivered us from the power of darkness. He's delivered us. And if you look back here with the children of Israel, they were delivered up out of Egypt. Now there's a reason why I'm saying this. The word deliver, you know, a lot of times we, we look at words and we think that, you know, there was a reason why Yahweh used certain words in the places that he used them. Now he has delivered us, and the word delivered means prepare for a fight. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> yes, that's what that word means. You're delivered. So when they were delivered up out of Egypt, that was preparing them for a fight. You understand? And he has delivered us um, from the power of darkness. See, from the mystery of iniquity. He has delivered us from that and brought us into the light. And once you're in the light, you know, when you... I'm going to show you about the vision because I just have to do some things. I have to do some things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's delivered us out of darkness. Keep reading there. Let's read that whole verse again. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness. He's delivered us from the power of darkness. So the mystery of iniquity, you know, there's two mysteries in operation. The mystery of righteousness, which is Yahweh, Elam, and Yahshua. And the mystery of iniquity was just Satan, the devil, and all his little imps. All right, read. And have translated us. And look at Yahweh has translated us in, I'll read. Into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh huh, read. In whom we have redemption. And look at, in Yahshua the Messiah, and Mike was already talking about it, but in the resurrected Yahshua. See, Yahshua went through a death, burial, resurrection, ascended, and poured out the Holy Spirit. In the resurrected body of Yahshua, which is the temple here is a type and a shadow of, see? In Yahshua's body, we have redemption in, in Yahshua. 
Yahshua went through this death on the cross, which is a huge thing. We can talk about that sometime. But he went through this death on the cross. And through that death, we have redemption. Or he's redeemed or bought us back. And I want to show you something about the ages when I get done with this. But <laughs> hopefully I'll get something done. Read. Even the forgiveness of sin. Even the forgiveness of sin. Read. Who is the image of the invisible El? And look at this Yahweh Elohim. He's the Yahshua. He's the image of the invisible Elohim. See, because Yahweh pure spirit, that's invisible. That's attribute. See, takes on a super incorporeal shape and form. But that's still invisible, seen only in visions and revelations. You understand that? That's the invisible. See, and this is the image of the invisible. So when you see it in the natural, it's pointing back to something spiritual. All right? Now, what I'd like to do first, before we go any further here, what I'd like to do is show you how this Bible was put together. Because it's very important that we get what the Bible really is and why we use it. All right? And I'm going to do it as quick as I can, but as concise as I can. All right, I want you to get me the verse that uh, Mike already talked about, which is 2 Peter. I think it's 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Then I want you to go back into Exodus and get me Exodus 24, start right at 1. And then I want you to get me Jeremiah 30, uh, 30 and 1. Is it 2 second, second Peter? I believe it's 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. 1 and 21? 20. 120. Knowing this first. Now this is Peter, and just, you know, we're going to learn something about the ages today if I get to it, but it's right in the beginning of the self-same age that we're in right now. Peter is talking about this. All right? So it's something that is after Yahshua went through his death, burial, and resurrection. He's talking about this. Read on. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. No, this is something first you ought to know. Yeah. Read. That no prophecy of the scripture. That no prophecy or no teaching of any scripture. No prophecy of the scripture. And I'm not mad at anybody. I know I get rough and <laughs> loud and everything that happens. I'm the <laughs> I, I just do whatever Yahshua gives me to do. All right, read on, please. Read that last part again. Knowing this, this first. Okay, no knowing prophecy. this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture. So nothing that was written in the Scriptures. And he's already showed you in Isaiah 8 and 20 mm -hmm. that your Scriptures are the first five books of Moses, yeah. right? That's the, the books of the law. And then the books from Joshua to Malachi, which are right. the prophets. Mm -hmm. So no teaching in them law and prophets right. are of any private right. interpretation. Mm -hmm. No man, and tell you, you know, I was around churches too. In fact, I was a church bum when I was a kid. <laughs> when, well, not a real young kid, because my father was an atheist and I couldn't go to church. Mm -hmm. And so, as soon as I got old enough, you know, you want to do just what your parents <laughs> don't want you to do. So, as soon as I could, I wanted to go to church. So, I went from yeah. church to church to church. And all kinds of, so I know what they teach. And see, one of the Bible studies that I went to, and it was not too long before I came to this teaching, I went to this particular Bible study. And we sat around at a round table, and they'd read a scripture, and they what do you think this means? And what do you think this means? What do you think this means? And I thought it was all right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Until I got down here, and no private interpretation. The scriptures are written to point out Yahshua the Messiah. That's what they're about. They're not about us and our little pains and everything else that goes in anyway. Read. <laughs> but holy men of Yahweh. Now holy right. men of Yahweh. In other words, Yahweh put his spirit in Moses, yeah. had him write down. He told Moses what to write. Write this down in a book. Ain't that right? Yeah. And he told Jeremiah what to write. And he told Ezekiel what to write. And he told all them guys what to write down. So that's what made them holy. He told them what to write down. And a, long, a few years ago in the school, they were calling the prophets demons. People were people that we know were called, and they, they were everybody had a demon. You understand? Everybody had a state. Oh, yeah. See, but that's not what Yahweh called them. He called them holy men of Yahweh. Wrote your book. Mm -hmm. See, they were writing.
writing down what thus saith Yahweh. Moses didn't have an idea that I'm going to be a great minister and I'm going to have a great following and I'm going to go out in the desert. And that was not his idea. You understand that? And neither was the Jeremiah's idea. In fact, Jeremiah, I think, was the one that said, I'm going to shut up. I'm not going to speak about Yahweh anymore. I'm tired of this... <laughs> this uh, persecution that's happening to me and he said it was a burning in him and he couldn't even stop himself from saying it what thus saith Yahweh you understand you're dealing with a great Elohim around here see all right uh, go to the next verse please Jer uh, uh, Exodus, 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 Exodus please yeah Exodus 24 and 1 read and he said unto Moses who said unto Moses Yahweh Elohim is speaking unto Moses you see in this vision that he's having and that's what we're talking about this in this school is a result of a vision and revelation and what you see on these charts is part of his vision and revelation it's part of what he saw and it came right from Yahweh you know the one that kept, keeps Saturn and the earth and everything from bumping around and the one that keeps everything in order that's the one this teaching came from. Think about that, folks. Put it in your mind. This is something else that you've come into here. And it's not a plaything. All right? Read. So re keep reading. And he said unto Moses. And he said unto Moses in this vision that he's given to Moses. Read. Come up unto Yahweh. Come up unto Yahweh. Thou and Aaron. Nadab and Abihu, uh -huh. and seventy of the elders of Israel. That's right. Read and worship you afar off. And worship you afar off. Read and Moses alone. And shall Moses come near alone, Yahweh. he's going to come near Yahweh. Read. But all, but they shall not come nigh. Neither shall the people go up to up with him. That's right. Read. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh. Uh, look at Moses came back down and he told the people all the words of Yahweh. This is first up there. All right. Read. And all the judgments. And all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, uh -huh. All the words which Yahweh had said, we will do. That's right. And Read. Moses wrote all the words of what? Yahweh. And Moses wrote all the words that Yahweh gave him up here in a vision. That's how your book of uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy got together. Moses was told by Yahweh Elohim, write this down in a book. So when you're reading in Exodus, what you're reading is what they'll say of Yahweh. And I'll tell you, I'll make a bold statement right now. When you come to this school, you're going to find out what they'll say at Yahweh, and it's the first time you've ever heard what he said in your whole life. You might have read the Bible, but you didn't understand anything about it. You understand that? And we know because we've been there. <laughs> you know, we all have, that's our testimony. I didn't know one thing about the Creator. Not one thing. All right, read the next verse, Jeremiah. Jeremiah mm -hmm. 30 and 1. Read. The word that came to Jeremiah from The Yahweh. word that came. Now you already talked about what the word is. It's Yahweh Elohim in a super incorporeal shape and form. Appears in visions and revelations. The word of Yahweh came unto Moses. The word of Yahweh came unto Jeremiah in a vision. Read on. From Yahweh saying, Thus saith, speaketh Yahweh no. Elohim of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. Read. Saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Jeremiah, write all the words that I have spoken in a book. And you can do it with every single book in your Bible. They came from Yahweh. And then after Yahshua the Messiah goes through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and pours out the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one that's responsible for writing the books. You understand that? Your, your epistles in there, it's the Holy Spirit doing the writing. And in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, sometimes even in the school, they get a bad name. Matthew, Mark, oh no, it's not about Matthew. Well, you know what? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those books were, they were eyewitnesses to the things that Yahshua did when he was walking around. And after they received the Holy Spirit is when they wrote it down in a book. And they wrote it down and they, I'm the one. <laughs> you understand? They said they were, anyway. All right. Okay. Now what I want to do. <laughs> now I want to go back to the scripture reading and go to, uh, hmm, I can't remember where. Keep reading where you were. Okay. I was at, I read 15 over. Colossians 1 and 15. 
who is the image of the invisible L, the uh -huh. first cause of all creation. He's the first cause of all creation. See, read. For him were all things created. For look at, by Yahweh Elohim were all things created. He's the creator. We didn't know that your Messiah was the creator. You understand that? And if you look at it by the pattern, you've got him when he comes forth and he creates the creation according to the pattern of himself. He's the creator. Then he comes down. He's the savior. And then after he goes through his death, burial, and resurrection, pours out the Holy Spirit. He sits king mm -hmm. in your heart and mind. You understand that? So he's creator, he's savior, he's king. Of course it has to be three. We have a pattern that we go by down here. Most holy place, holy place, corbant roundabout. You understand? That? If you just follow it, then you can follow along with what we're doing. Okay, keep reading, please. For by him were all things created. By him were some heaven. things created. All, all things. things. All things were created. Mm -hmm. That does include you and me, folks. <laughs> Read. That are in heaven. Uh huh. And that are in earth. That's right. Visible and invisible. He created the visible and the invisible. Read. Rather they be thrown. You know that there was a creation. This first age was the creative age, and he created the angelic creation first, and then the physical creation. He created the invisible and the visible creations. See, read. Rather they be thrones or dominions uh -huh. or principalities or power. Read. All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and they were created for him. Read on. And he is before all things. And look at, he was before all things. He was the first thing that steps forth. He comes forth from pure spirit. I don't mean outside of, but he comes into view. You understand that? He comes forth. Read. And in him all things have been permanently placed. And in him have been all things been permanently placed. And with the ages, see, you have him being the beginning and the ending. That's what Yahweh is. Yahweh is pure spirit. He's the beginning and the ending. And this is something I like to say about pure spirit. You have this. Let's get um, uh, Deuteronomy six and four, and and uh, in Zechariah fourteen and nine. And I know most of you have heard this before, but maybe somebody hasn't. You understand? Mm -hmm. Read Deuteronomy six and four. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm trying to get Deuteronomy 6. <laughs> okay, here, O Israel. Okay, now he's saying there, the, the, he's speaking through Moses, but he's saying, Here, O Israel. And Israel was a nation that was chosen by Yahweh to be the example yeah. of those chosen that would have the Holy Spirit. All right? These were a chosen people back here, yeah. chosen by what? Brought up. Okay. Hear, O Israel. Israel. Hear, O Israel. So whenever you see anything about Israel, just like Israel was delivered back here, ain't that right? Well, this is a type, shadow, and example. The natural. All your natural biblical creation and all your natural physical creation are types, shadows, examples showing you something spiritual. How do you think you're going to get to know something spiritual? It's going to woof to you? No. He's shown it to us. That's why he gave us this vision and revelation to show you something. It's shown. You understand? And that's a great gift to us. See? He came down where we are to show us something. You understand? Read. Yahweh, our, oh Israel. Hear, oh Yahweh. Yahweh, our Elohim. Read. Is Yahweh a unity? Is Yahweh a unity? So he's one spirit, and spirit is attributes of wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And these attributes take on a super incorporeal shape and form, but it's still the attributes of Yahweh. And in the textbook, if you can picture that first plate in, that in the 40 plate chart, it might be the first or the second plate, you have Yahweh Elohim coming forth, and it shows the attributes in a heart. It shows the attributes in a heart. Ain't that right? Yeah, yeah that is on that chart. But you have a, a, the attributes in a heart. And each one of the attributes that are written in there have a cloud around them. They're a heart and a cloud. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's spirit. And you know what the name of that, you know, on the 40 play chart, all the 
all the plates are named. That name is that chart is called wisdom. It's the wisdom of Yahweh. It was the wisdom of Yahweh to come forth and make everything according to the pattern. Because really, that those attributes are in order on there. And then the next plate on there is the, the attributes according to the pattern. Wasn't it great wisdom to show everything by a pattern? I'm like, what? what, what? Who? <laughs> and sometimes you're just like, yes! Anyway, when you see things, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, keep reading. And, I, um, and thou shalt love Yahweh. Thy okay, God. go to uh, Zechariah, please. Zechariah 14 and 9. Uh -huh. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. And look at when he's saying this, Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. And look at Zechariah was written right here in the third age. That's where all your writing went on the law and the testimony was in this third age in time. All right, these two dispensations. And so what you have is when he's saying he shall be, that's futuristic. Over here, after Yahshua goes through his death, burial, and resurrection, he's gonna, he will be king over all the earth. You understand that? Here is what he's talking, writing it down, but here is what he's talking about. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Read. And in that day, Yahweh will prove to be a unity. Okay, read the whole thing again. And Yahweh shall be king. And look at Yahweh Elohim, he's going to be king yes. in this age. And this is the present kingdom age. He's going to be king. Why? Because he's gone through his death, burial, resurrection, and he's accomplished the things that he was going to accomplish in the purpose. And he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit. And when he pours out that Holy Spirit, the kingdom is restored. You understand that? The kingdom of, the kingdom of Satan is abolished and the kingdom of Yahshua is restored. And and once that kingdom is restored, then the man can have the right king sitting in his heart and mind. He becomes king over all the earth. You understand that? Yeah. Read. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. That's right. And in that day, Yahweh... And in that day, in the day that he is king over all the earth, in that day... Mm -hmm. Read. Yahweh will prove to be a unity. Yahweh is going to prove to be a unity. And with one name. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. He's a unity, folks. And look, at this is the best part of it for us. See, Yahweh himself, these attributes, take out a super incorporeal shape and form, create the creation, create all this biblical creation that we go through here, see? And then he comes on down, fulfills the law and the testimony, which he started talking about. He comes in and fulfills what was written in the law and the testimony. Ain't that right? And he even said, I and my father are one, so he's fulfilling being a unity. You understand that? <laughs> see? Because this is Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua right here. So anyway, he comes in. He, he, he goes through this death, burial, resurrection. And look at it. It's the self-same spirit. It's the spirit here. Takes on a shape and form that comes into Yahshua the Messiah and fulfills the law and the testimony and teaches and walks around yeah. and you know all the things that he yeah. did and he was going quick you understand because he's faster than the speed of light see you understand that he was he was doing some stuff when he was fulfilling you understand that see he fed them he healed them he showed what kind of spirit this is See that? Anyway, so he's fulfilling along the testimony. Then he goes through this death burial and resurrects and he pours out the Holy Spirit. What spirit? Self-same spirit that he has. Self-same spirit. Self-same. So this spirit is now in you. And that's what he's talking about there in the last couple of verses of this verse, of this chapter. Uh, yeah, let's go back to the first, first chapter of Colossians. Okay, we're at the 18th verse. And he is the head of the body. And he's the head of the body. You understand that? Read. The assembly. Uh-huh. He's the head of the assembly. Read. Who is the beginning of the firstborn. He's the beginning. Read. From the dead. Uh-huh. He's dead. the firstborn from the dead. You understand that? And he proved it when he went through his death and burial. Many of the sons that slept in the dust of the, earth, dust of the earth resurrected with him. You understand that? He was the firstborn of many dead. Read on. That in all things he might have preeminence among all. Uh-huh. Read. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. Okay, read. Are you down to the last couple verses of this chapter? You want... 
uh, jump down to 26. Even a mystery. Now, even this mystery, because you know, all these things are wrapped up in a mystery. Now, after they've been shown to you, they're not a mystery anymore. It's not a mystery what his name is to you. That's not a mystery. It was before you heard it. You see? And the first time you heard it, I mean, I argued with the people that the first time I went to class, I'm in, in one of the stupidest arguments that people give, I had it. And I sat right there in the front row, probably all tightened up, you know, and I thought, I, I don't think God cares. The great God of this universe, he doesn't care what you call him. That was my argument. You see, this teaching does change your mind. Because this is truth. This is truth. All right, read. Even a mystery. Even this great mystery, hid. which has been hid from ages and from generations. See, it was hid all the way through these first two ages. You understand that? First two ages in time. It was hid. It was hid for 4,000 years, this mystery. That's a great mystery you've been able to see. Mm -hmm. Read on. But now is my man. But right now, after Yahshua goes through his death, burial, and resurrection, and he pours out that Holy Spirit, that's the light in you. And it makes manifest what he has done all the way along. Mm -hmm. Just like in, if you're in the dark and if we all close our eyes in here, we don't see anything. We can't, don't know what's going on. You understand? But when you open your eyes, when your eyes are open to this teaching, and the light comes in, mm -hmm. and the light of Yahshua comes in, you see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I'll tell you what, the way this world is right now, and it's getting worse and worse all the time, just like was said in the prayer, mm -hmm. we need to have our eyes open to the truth. See? And not be taken away with things. Okay, go ahead and read. But now it's made manifest to his son. But right now it's being manifest to his sons. Read on. To whom Yahweh will make known. And this was right at the beginning of the self-same age that we're in right now. If it was taught in the beginning of this age. And by the way, the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, which is Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures, was taught in the beginning of this age. That's what the apostles were. That was the apostolic. They were given that to teach in the beginning of the age. They were to go in all the world teach the gospel. Ain't that right? So that's what was taught in the beginning of the age. And you know how many souls were added a day? There was some, one time 3,000 souls added in one day from the preaching of Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection and them just hearing it. You understand that? Now if it was, had that kind of an effect in the beginning of the age, you think it's less effective in the end of the age? Just keep preaching the gospel because it does have an effect on souls. You understand that? It's the th thing that's going to cause you to be resurrected from the dead or have your mind elevated in the spirit. Keep reading. To whom, ya to whom Yahweh will be known, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery? Uh huh. Among this the mystery. Nations. This is the mystery among the nations. And this is the glory of the mystery among the nations. Read. Which is the Messiah in you. Which is you. the Messiah right in you. And you, if you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, and that he did this for you, and that he did die a death, and he, you are redeemed through his blood, just like the scriptures have been talking about there. See? And if you believe that that Holy Spirit's going to be poured out, then that's the mystery that's been hid from ages and generations. Read. The only hope of glory. Okay, read right from ages and dispensations. <laughs> sorry, I know I'm hard to read for. Wait, I'm sorry, where are you Just read up a verse. Okay. Where you were. Even the mystery uh -huh. have been hid from ages and from generations. That's right, read. But now is made manifest to his sons. Say so right now it's being manifest to his sons, read. To whom Yahweh will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery That's among right. the nations. Now remember, this is what it is. It's the glory of this mystery among the nations. Read on. Which is the Messiah in you. Which is the self-same spirit that created the creation, that made all the things happen in this creation. Went through a death, burial, resurrection. That's that self-same spirit that he shared with us. Yahshua in you, your hope of glory. Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. All right. All right. Do I still have time? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Uh, I mean, 15 minutes? 15. 15 minutes. Okay, good. All right. I want to show you. Oh, I'm sorry. You have 45 minutes. Oh. Wow. Okay, good. I would love to hear from all of you, but I do have, you know, I know that Yashua's giving me something. And, and you got to go with it. Okay. I want to talk about the dispensations and ages. Oh, I want to get something here first. Okay, 
quick, 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 Ben. All right, I want you to read these two right here. Now these are just little quips from Dr. Kinley's transcripts. Mm -hmm. One that had the founder, I want you to hear what he said about the ages. And I'll tell you, I was weak on the ages for a long time. And I've been studying charts now for probably 10 years. And I have them on my table, <laughs> Mike can testify, I've always got my books all over. <laughs> anyway, um, I have them out and I have four different sets of the charts, different ones, like so I have the charts that came from uh, Albuquerque, I have the charts that came from Springfield, I have the charts that came from Lansing, and there's different things on them. And I don't mean it was different, they've been painted different, and different people, you know, when they did it down. So when I say something about the chart that's wrong in your charts, I'm not finding fault with the way you did your charts. I'm just trying to show you that when you put them all together, there's a clue Clear picture, all right? And you're gonna really see something with it. I'll give you an example quick. Right here, you know, I've studied the top of this chart for quite some time, and this is the purpose. And this is also your ages up here, see? But it's the purpose from beginning to end. So right here you have Yahweh in his creative motion, Yahweh Elohim, and then you have Chaosis. And right here is your witness chart, where all the witnesses on those, the, that, that I was talking about right here were written. All your witnesses are right there on that one circle. All right, and you can come up here and look at it after class or so, do some time. But right here, the, in this particular plate, and it's this way on almost all the charts, written, it's just like this. But this is the thing that I saw just lately. Up in here, I want you to know there's, um, the fall of Adam, so that's right here. These are the things we first learned when we came to class. This is nothing new. It's just looking at it, and it'll, it'll, right. it'll give you a different perspective. All right, so anyway, this is the fall of Adam. Then you have up here the, no, the Noahic uh, promise, or you know, what happened with Noah. Then you have, so the fall of, then you have the Melchizedek priesthood right here, and the promise given. And then this represents the law coming in. That's what that heart is. And then, this is why, and then over here, you've got Yahshua's uh, birth, life, death in his ministry in here. And then it goes into Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. All right, so anyway, this is what you have over here. Um, that's what's in this chart. Also, you have down in here, and I think it's on here, the creation is finished. And this, that's important, because I used to scratch my head whenever, what's that mean, the creation is finished? What's that got to do with the witnesses up there? Wow, look at this. The creation that he made, and if you look at every day of creation, he gets to the end of it, he said it's good and very good. Mm -hmm. Creates the animals, oh, they're good and very good. Why are they good? Because they're not gonna change. An elephant's not gonna turn into a rhinoceros. The seed was in them when they were born. An oak tree is never gonna be a palm tree. You understand? Everything that was witnessing to him was gonna be just that way. So when he finished creating it, just that way. Never going to change. Ain't that nice? It's good. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing to understand. See? All right. So anyway, that you got the end of it. So right here is the thing that I'm trying to get to that I saw. This sun right here, which you know that the sun in the sky represents Yahshua the Messiah coming in. Ain't that right? Going through that death and burial and resurrection every day. See? But you have right here, you have the sun in the sky. On the chart from Albuquerque, the sun in the sky is further over here because this is what happened. See, the sun came in. This sun came in on the fourth day. And this sun came in right on the fourth. Ain't that right? Right down here on the fourth day, just before the fourth age came in. Isn't that right? He came in there. So it would be over a little bit on the chart, you understand? So you see where it is in time. Also you have, and this was something really sweet to see, all these trees that are up in here, because you know, when he put things down, he put it just the way that yes. he showed us something. All these trees down here, have you ever seen a hedgerow where trees are and the, they grow according to the way the wind blows? Like they'll go up at, in Alfred where our farm is, they grow wet, the, the wind is uh, north, northwest I think, and maybe northeast, but they go in a certain way. 
They all, so the trees are shaped that way. And the trees go that way. Well, on that chart from Albuquerque, all the trees are going in this direction. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Now that's, a, that's something sweet. Because see, he purposes it. And everything, that this is something to learn about the ages. Everything that he purposed, he's going to accomplish before the end of this thing. Mm -hmm. He's going to, and it's going to be just the way that he put, set it up. And it's going to be accomplished all the way through. Them trees are all going this way, showing you the. We don't go backwards in the purpose, you understand? We go back to the witnesses, but you don't go back to the way things were. You always go forward in the purpose. You understand that? Okay, read those couple things from Dr. Kidley. Okay, this is from Transcript Day of Eternity. Yep. 1975 is in the Black Book. Page one There is no way under the sun. For you to understand the purpose of Yahweh without a profound knowledge of the dispensations and ages. Mm -hmm. Would you read it again? Mm -hmm. Read it nice there and loud now, otherwise I'll have to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> read. There is no way under the sun for you to understand the purpose of Yahweh without a profound knowledge of the dispensations and ages. See, we've been, this is something we're supposed to be knowing. Right. A profound knowledge of the dispensations and ages. See, go ahead and read. And you know, a pro, pro, you know, and you've looked up all these words, but you, when you have a profound knowledge, it's just an encompassing knowledge witnessed by all the things that he has done. And you can know one little thing, and that's a profound knowledge. You might have a profound knowledge of a cell. Or you might have a profound knowledge of the name. Because you've seen it from... A, a wide view. In this teaching, you're given a wide view. And no matter how little you understand or how much Yahshua has given you, that's profound, folks. Yes. You understand that? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Read on. Or read okay, the next this one. This is from SoundCloud <laughs> number 31, uh -huh. page 6. Uh -huh. One of the first things you have to do is learn something about the dispensations and ages. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things we have to do is learn something about the discipline. So, I, you know, I read transcripts every day. So I've been reading this, and I'm like, I was weak on some of it. And I'm like, that's, I'm done with this weakness. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> so anyway, I want to show you. First of all, I'd like to show you on the charts the dispensations and ages. And you have it across here like I started already. You have Yahweh in his creative motion, creating the creation. Him going through his death, burial, and resurrection. Resurrection, ascension, pouring out of the Holy Spirit in this plate right here. This is the dispensation of grace. And then over in here, these are the two things that are happening down here at the end. Yeah, right? uh, it started on the day of Pentecost because when the Holy Spirit was poured out, and it's right on this chart, which is really cool. Persecution of the assembly. See? And it was the gospel pre is preached beginning at Jerusalem. So as soon as the gospel's preached, what happens? Persecution of the assembly. See how important the gospel is being preached? All right, so you have that on that chart. But these things take place down here on these things, and this is the end of it here, and it's also the end here. And then it goes back into Yahweh Elohim, and here he's alone and by himself, but just like he told Adam, see, right here, <laughs> just like he told Adam. You know, his first instructions was to be, excuse me, I need a little water, please. Thank you was to be fruitful and multiply. That was the first thing that he was told. Ain't that right? And so why was he told that? Because he's a type in the shadow and example. Isn't that right? He's an example of Yahshua the Messiah. And Yahshua the Messiah was going to be fruitful and multiply. That's why he created the creation. That's why he created the souls. So they could be in him as his fruit. We're his fruit. You understand that? All right. So anyway, oops, sorry. Sorry. So anyway, <laughs> you have this, uh, uh, him being at the end with his subjects around him. And look at this, and this is another thing. I'm, see how that's all right within the cloud? And all these subjects are right within that great spirit of Yahweh? Oh, it's something else. All right. So anyway, then along in here, thank you. Oh, you're so kind. You get dry up here. Thank you. So right here you also have the dispensations and ages. Because this is your earth being inundated in water. That's your beginning in the first, uh, the first day. Self-same chaosis, see? And by the way, 
It's a very simple answer. What in the hell is going on in this world right now? It came in in chaosis. It's going to go out that way. <laughs> That's your simple answer to it. You understand that? And it seems, well, anyway, so you got that chaosis it being in, so that's your first uh, coming on in. Then you have Noah and the flood here, isn't that right? And that's your second dispensation. See? Then you have the Mel well, Melchizedek's not on here, but you have the, the law coming in, and that's your third and fourth dispensation, but the fourth dispensation where the law of Moses comes in, isn't that right? Then he goes through his death, burial, and resurrection, and that's your the coming down. Do you see how it's going down through the ages? Mm -hmm. See? See? And then right here at the day of Pentecost, that's coming into this fifth and sixth age. Or the fifth and sixth dispensation, I mean. All right? So that's your ones there. All right, there's more. Right here. Look at this. It's right here. This your age is on here. Isn't that something? Right here, you have the Adam of transgression. That's right here. You understand? And you think about the things he repeated. The important things that we, and we, we talk about Adam every time we get together. We talk about, do you understand? These things are repeated. These are his documented witnesses. These, these were the things that he thought was important enough to teach on a regular basis, to put on the charts. You understand? And it's amazing. The first time you come into the school, you hear about Adam. You hear about Noah. You hear about Abraham. Isn't that right? You hear about Moses bringing the law in. These are the things you hear. Like I said, there's nothing new here, folks. But if you look at it in a more encompassing way, it'll, it, it, it helps. All right? Everything that we do helps. All right? Everything that Yahshua does helps us. And don't we ask for help from him all the time? That's the one thing. Oh, boy. Would you help me? Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> See what I mean? All right. So anyway, you had Adam here, then you have, so this is your first dispensation, your second dispensation, your third dispensation, your fourth dispensation. You understand that? Right here on the bottom of this chart. And then you have Yahshua go through his death, burial, and resurrection. That's your middle of the chart. And it's the middle of this chart. That's his death, burial, and resurrection. It's the middle of this chart, his death, burial, and resurrection. You understand? And look at the sun in the sky is the middle right here. Or the tabernacle. This is the sun manifest on earth. You understand that? But you have the sun in the sky. And that sun in the sky shows that example every single day of the sun going down into death and buried in the, under the horizon and resurrect on the third day. Every single day. That's what that sun is there for. And that's the middle. You understand that? So I'm going to stick with the ages. All right, so that's his death, burial, and resurrection. And then you have the fifth and the sixth um, dispensations. The Gentiles, Pentecost. Well, it's actually not the sixth dispensation over here, but it's the beginning of the fifth and the sixth dispensation. This is your fourth age over here. So can you see how the ages are on this chart? Isn't that sweet? Ages are on this chart. Ages are on this chart. And by the way, on this particular chart, Dr. Kinley taught off this chart 15 years exclusively. It was the only chart they had. All right? So everything that is on this chart, you're going to be able to find it on one of the other charts. You understand that? Almost everything I've ever seen on here, you can find it someplace else, which I think is amazing, too. All right. Now I want you to give me a couple verses. Uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, and I'm not sure where that is. Um, and then I want you to get me Psalms. Uh, 19. <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> Psalms 19 and then Isaiah 28, 9 and 10. Okay, would you read that first? Yes. Second Timothy okay. two and fifteen. Is everybody with me? Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what I do. She said no. Nope. Like, oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> show, study to show thyself approved. Unto okay. Now Yahweh. study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. You know, this is something that I would just like to clear up. Um. There's a doctrine going around that there's nothing you can do. 
Well, there's nothing you can do to gain salvation that Yahshua went through his death, burial, and resurrection for. You can't do any of these things physically so to, to do, do anything, right? But all through your epistles, they're telling you something you can do. And Dr. Kinley, by the way, said, come to class. Do all that you can to get somebody else to see this. Yes. Is that doing something? It really is. You understand? And I think it's, it's just the words a misunderstanding, but it really does need to be explained. There is something to you can do. Study to show yourself approved. And one of the things people do with this verse is they'll go back to, I think in John, where Yahshua was talking to them and he said, uh, "Don't just don't take any, uh, any, any care. What, what, could we find it? We need to find it. What you're going to teach or what you're going to say unto them. I'm sorry, I can't remember some of the verses. I think it's uh, Matthew 10 and 19. Okay, want to read? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when they deliver you up, take Now, when they God. deliver you up. So who's he talking to here? He's talking to the apostles, but he's telling them when they're deliver, delivered up. Who are they going to be delivered up to? They're going to be delivered up to the Sanhedrin council and the 70 elders that were against them and, and opposed to the teachings of Yahshua. So he's telling them when, read it again. But when they deliver you up. When they deliver you up, read. Take no thought. How or what you shall speak. Don't don't take no thought of how or what you shall speak when you're delivered up under the Sanhedrin Council. But when you're among your own selves, study to show yourself approved. You can't show somebody something if you haven't looked at it. You understand that? You need to once in a while crack a book. <laughs> or look at a chart or go to a class someplace other than your own little world. You understand? You you do need to do something. Do something. <laughs> yes, do something. See, and really, just think about the aims of this school. Right. Every single one of them are action verbs. Right. Yeah. Oh, you can't do anything. Well, really? <laughs> See? Anyways, go ahead and go. Let's go back where we were. Okay, that was Second Timothy mm -hmm. two and fifteen. Right. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. Study to show yourself approved unto the dean. Mm -hmm. no, Study to show God. yourself approved unto the brethren so they can see how smart you are. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself approved unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Read. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Read on. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And see, it's rightly dividing the dispensations and ages. Because, you know, one of the things, and I'm not saying I didn't know them. I knew the difference between when the law came in and when Yahshua fulfilled it. Of course I did. I came from New York. I learned law, prophets, and fulfillment. You understand? You learn these things. But as far as actually knowing how to put it together by the ages, I, I, I had a weak foundation in it. All right, so anyway, what you have here is rightly dividing the word of truth. And I just want to show, quickly show you the chart, just because, well, there's no, no reason to explain it. So you got the first age here, that's your creative age. Then you come into the, and right here is when they were in the Garden of Eden. See how these, these little boxes here, they show you the, the coming over from one age to the next, all right? So right in here you have the Garden of Eden. And right here, when they came out of the garden in this first dispensation, when they came out and then they fell in their consciousness, that's when time started. You understand? And think about this. Before that time, there was no darkness. Can you imagine what they felt like coming out of that garden? Yes. Because we say, oh, he came out of the garden. They came on out of the garden. She followed him on out. They came out of the garden. Well, you know what came? When they came out of this state, which is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, and they come down into darkness, mm -hmm. that's the first time they experience death. That's the first time they experience darkness. And can you imagine what kind of darkness that would have been the first time they felt it? They came into darkness. 
and all the animals that were up in here in peace and harmony, they came down into darkness and they started their business the minute they came down. You know those creatures of the night? The lions start, and I've been to Africa. I've been in a tent in Africa and I know when you hear them lions and it's dark out, it does give you the chills. Yes. You understand that? So you got to come down, they come down into that darkness. You understand? And they hear them animals out there. And they're scared as heck. Why do you think the children, all children, are afraid of the dark? Because he came down into darkness. And he's a type of all children. You understand that? They come down into darkness. Why are we afraid of the dark? See, and sometimes you get over it and sometimes you don't. I'm not crazy about the dark. All right? So anyway, they come down into that darkness. And another thing things that happened when they came down in that darkness, they had no idea that the sun was going to come up. They didn't know anything. They came down into darkness. So when that sun peaks the horizon, no wonder the birds sing at 5 o'clock in the morning. Because they were going to have something to sing about. After. They had hope after that. The sun came up. You understand that? Can you imagine what that would have felt like? The sun came up. And then they didn't know it was going to get dark again. But then it gets dark again. Well, maybe the sun will come up again. And the sun comes up again. So can you see how great it would have been for them to have that sun come up every day? It would have been a great thing. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> oh, I forgot where I was. Okay. Uh, okay, I was showing you the ages. So anyway, yeah. The, 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 uh, that's where darkness come in. So the, that's where the creation starts, the physical creation. And that's your first dispensation. And then Adam all die. Isn't that right? And then your second dispensation is your Noahic dispensation. And by the way, right here was the one that Yahshua used, uh, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the end. And what was in the days of Noah? The imagination of every heart was only evil continually. So that's another thing. What the hell is going on? Oh, your imagination is only evil. Right. All right. So then, then you have, and right here again, you have this uh, box in Noah and the flood and the end of the age. So that's your end of your age right there. Then you come into the third dispensation. And this is where you have a, the Abrahamic promise comes in. All right. And this is where law comes in, actually. Because they had laws here, see? So you, this is where your laws come in. And then the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, or the law given to Moses came in right here. And then Yahshua the Messiah comes in right here at the end of this age. In the Right here is when he comes in, right here. See, so you got on this line between here and here, you got Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. And he ascends into this age. All right, so that's your ages. And in the fifth dispensation, what you have is, just like on the fifth day, that's when they finally had, when the birds begin to sing on the fifth day. Isn't that right? The birds came in on the fifth day, folks. See? And that's your five o'clock in the morning principle. And then he, on the, when they, when you, when, <laughs> Pentecost is five, so they begin to sing the song of Yahweh on this fifth dispensation. You understand that? And look at they were given the responsibility. The apostles now, the eleven that were left, Judas went off and hung himself. The eleven that were left were given the responsibility of preaching the gospel. Now let's go ahead and get Matthew twenty four fourteen. Matthew 24, 14. <laughs> and the glad and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Now this is Yahshua speaking to his apostles right here at the end of this age. And he's saying in this gospel of the kingdom. And I know you're going to get sick of this because I teach it almost every time I'm on the floor. He's talking about the gospel that was taught in this school. When Dr. Kinley was talking about whenever he, and he got this verse a lot. Mm -hmm. If you read transcripts and you listen to this stuff, he taught this verse a lot. And when he taught it, he said in this gospel, which we teach in this school, yes. you understand that? Yes. It shall be preached. And you know, there's something else to think about. When Yahweh says something, you show me one place where he said something and it didn't come to pass. You can't find one place where he says something and it doesn't come to pass. You understand that? 
And so when he said right here, and this gospel of the kingdom, it shall be preached in all this age, it's going to be preached, whether you preach it or not. You don't want to get so big to think, oh yeah, I got to go out there and I got to be sure I get there. No, the gospel shall be preached. He's going to raise up ministers at the end of this thing through the vision and revelation given to Dr. Kenley, and it will be preached in the beginning of the age and the end. It's going to be preached through all the age. He said so. And there's always been a kind well, what happened in here? Well, the gospel was preached, I can tell you that, because it's in the book. You understand that? Read. And this gospel. And this gospel. Of the kingdom of the kingdom of Yahweh shall Read. be preached in all the world. It's going to be preached in all this age for a witness for a witness unto, unto all nations. All Read on. Nation. and that means Jew and Gentile. You understand? Read. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. And you know we're looking for the universal revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. That's the end. And the gospel's been preached and through this Zoom. It's been preached throughout the whole world, folks. See? And this gospel shall be preached in all the world. And then shall the end come. And that shows you how close we are to the end. You've got witnesses to show you that you're close. You understand that? Out of the Bible. See? All right. And that gathering together is another witness. And that's in Ephesians first chapter. But go ahead and read. Did I want one more thing? No. I want, I want you to go to... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Psalms 19. Actually, get me Isaiah first, Isaiah 28. You want Isaiah 28 and 9? Yep. Isaiah 28 and 9. Now remember, Isaiah is writing down what thus saith Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Don't forget what we've done so far. I know it's easy to let your mind go off. I've done it. You've done it. Mm -hmm. We do it. Read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall who teach? And then uh, Michael already told you that the spirit of Yahweh is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Yahshua now, after his death, burial, and resurrection, is the teacher. You understand that? And what's he say? Whom shall he teach knowledge? So knowledge is going to be taught. Mm -hmm. Read. Knowledge of what? How to fix your car? How to, be, how to dance around? And whatever you can think of. It's not that kind of physical, natural knowledge. We've all been given something. We survive in this world, amazingly. You understand? But you know what? It's the knowledge of Yahweh and what He has done. What He's accomplished from beginning to end. What has He done? What has He actually done? And the main thing is right here in the center for us to believe that He went through a death, burial, resurrection. And he ascended and poured out that Holy Spirit. That's the crux of the whole purpose. And it's not so hard to believe, folks. Everything that was written points up to it beforehand. Everything that's written afterwards points up to it. You understand? What do you think the apostles talk about? They're talking about Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. That's what they're talking about in Peter. That's what you understand? All the epistles that are written. They're talking about Yahshua the Messiah. That's what he's done. Went through that death, burial, and resurrection. And that is the thing that we must believe. And you know, I was reading another train. And I read transcripts, so I repeat them. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. Take it to him. But this is, the, this is another thing that he said. I forgot what he was going to say. I shouldn't be so sassy. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. Maybe it'll come back to me. Go ahead and read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he teach knowledge? So he, this knowledge is going to be taught. You understand? Read. Mm -hmm. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom is he going to make to understand doctrine? And this sometimes misunderstood. How are you going to make somebody? Well, you're just going to, he's going to get right in there. He's going to make you. <laughs> now, what kind of a husband would that be if he's going to make you understand doctrine? You don't beat it into you. 
That's not how he does it. No. That's not how a good husband does things. Right. He repeats the self same thing here, and he repeats it here, and he repeats it here, and he repeats it here, and he repeats it, and that's how he makes us finally see it. And we'll sit there as a witness. We don't see when we come in here, and half of, half, sometimes it's a long time before you see what's necessary. And you see, and you see, and you're like, Wow, I see it. How would you see it? By the repeating of Yahshua's righteous principles over and over and over. That's how he makes us see. Now that's a good way. That's a great way for a husband to be. Explaining and kind and generous and always here. <laughs> Isn't that right? Did you ever come to class when he wasn't here? <laughs> Read. Them that are weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And most of the time, when Dr. Kindley talked about this verse, he said, you got to get up off this bottle. He called that about, you got to get up off this bottle. Weaned from the milk. That doesn't mean you don't go back to the law and the testimony. But you have to see that there's righteousness on this side of Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. There's something else on besides this. You got to get up off this bottle. You understand? Read. Weed from the milk. Read. For precept must be upon precept. Because look at your precept and look at it right here. Your precept must be upon precept. In other words, down in here, there's a precept. And it's right out of the tabernacle pattern of him. There's a precept of a death. There's a precept of burial here, the labor. There's a precept of resurrection. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. And so you go to the, the, the things that have happened in the witnesses. You got death here with the children of Israel. Ain't that right? That was the death of that lamb. Death. Shows you this death. Death of the Lamb. Buried in the part of the waters of the Red Sea. Resurrect to worship Yahweh here at this mountain. Death, burial, resurrection. Here with Noah and the flood. They were told there's going to be a flood. They saw, he saw that death in there. That's that death. They were buried in that ark. The ark resurrects on the water. Death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Death, burial, resurrection. Yahshua the Messiah is pointed out as the Lamb of Yahweh, isn't he? There's death of all back here, the lambs. So he's pointed out that's a death sentence on him. Death. He's baptized by John the Baptist. That's a burial. Death. Burial. He resurrects to be tempted of the devil 40 days. Death. Burial. Resurrection. And it's pointing to the gospel of Yahshua, which is Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and pouring out of the Holy Spirit, according to what's in the scriptures. And we can explain more up in here, but you never have time to do it. <laughs> you understand? You just never have time to do it. But anyway, that's that death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, keep reading. That's your line upon line. Do you see where it comes from? It comes right out of this tabernacle. This is where your lines come from. See how this is the sun down here? This is sunlight. That's, what the line, that's where the lines come from. That's why the, the biblical creation agrees with the natural creation. If you're looking at it right, because it's coming from the same place. It's coming from the spirit of Yahweh. And the lines are line upon line, precept upon precept. You understand? It isn't the, isn't the sunshine where we get all our light from. Sunshine, that's where we get all our light from. Right there. That tabernacle. He is that tabernacle. We get our light from him. He's the light of the world. Read. Precept upon precept. Precept upon, upon precept. Line, line upon line. line Here a little line. in the law. Here a little in the prophets. Here a little in the creation. Here a little in your little life. You go by a pattern. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I was thinking about this the other day because I was showing how great a sacrifice it really was that Yahshua the Messiah died on the cross. Because look at all through here and even back here with Adam. You know they started sacrificing way back there? They, they made offerings. And they sacrificed with Noah. And they sacrificed and they, all the sacrifices that was done under the law. Huge amount of sacrifices. And in the temple there was all the... <laughs> vessels of sacrifices, all right? So you had all these sacrifices, and all of them together showed you what a great sacrifice it really was that Yahshua the Messiah got up there and died. A great sacrifice. And then it came to my mind. The witness that we have of eating. Every single day of our life, we eat at least one meal. You gotta eat to stay alive. So you got every man that ever lived, you eat a sacrifice, because the carrot was plucked from the picked from the ground and it, it gave up its life so you could live. And the hamburger gave, you don't understand? Everything, everything was sacrificed. So every man takes that in and it's buried, ain't that right? Yeah. 
and look at all them people that have eaten since the beginning of time. All them sacrifices. Mm -hmm. See what a huge thing it was? Mm -hmm. It was huge, folks. And us walking around hungry, we don't have no excuse for any of this stuff. We don't have any excuse for not understanding that he sacrificed because we do it. Yeah, you're a witness against yourself if you if you don't get on board and believe the things that Yahshua has done. You understand that? But precept must be passed. So keep, keep reading. Uh, line upon line. Uh huh. Here a little and there a little. Here a little out of the law and here a little out of the prophets. Read. Forward, stammering lips. And now this is the part I want you. I want you to look up two words for me: uttering and stammering. For with stammering lips, and you know back here, Moses was a stutterer, isn't that right? Or he stammered when he talked, or it's a repeating of the, of the syllables, the, 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 a repeating, you understand? Alright, so this whole thing is a repeating with stammering lips and another tongue. What's the other tongue? It's an elevated tongue. It's a tongue that came, and look at he, it. Came, the words came right out of the mouth of Yahweh unto the children of Israel. Another tongue. It wasn't their everyday life tongue. You understand that? Another tongue shall he speak to this people. Read. Read those two verses. And then go ahead and get me Isaiah. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. So that's how he's going to speak to this, his people. Read. Well, yep. Can't. Stammering. Or if somebody's oh. got it, stammering and uttering. Because I want you to get... Utter is complete. Absolute. Utter? Utter. Okay, so... Utter, complete, absolute, total. Okay, now I want you to get... I want you to keep those... Keep those... Um, definitions for me and then go to Psalms 19. You're going to like this because this is something, yeah. You know, when you study things, and this is another good reason to study. When you look at things and you study and you examine these things, Yahweh shows you stuff. He just, he just shows you stuff. You're like, what? What? <laughs> and you have a hard time. And you know, you take somebody... You know, you, all of us can say, we're not a great speaker. The speaker's Yahshua. The words are His. But, you know, you, you feel... You, you're not worthy of anything that's spoken. But this is the thing. One of the things that came to my mind years ago, because I'd be so scared when I got up to teach anything. And I understand when anybody... It is a responsibility. I'd be so scared. And I finally just said, I put my head down, I said, when I hear my name, I always have one prayer in there. Yahshua, I don't care if you make a fool out of me, but don't let me make a fool out of you. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> it's amazing. And I've always, I sit down and I'm like, wow, it works. <laughs> but it does. Okay, read. Psalms, please. Psalms 19. Yep. Uh, one. Yep. The heavens declare the glory of El. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at the glory of Yel, Yel, El in the ages. All right, read. The, the heavens declare the glory yeah. of El. Read. And the, and the um, firmament showeth uh -huh. his handiwork. And the firmament, or what's been made, the whole spans of the creation, shows his handiwork, or what he has done. He's put his signature on everything. Just like you have the whys in the trees, the whys in the rivers, the whys in your veins. He's put his name right in everything. He signed everything. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. It shows his handiwork. Read on. And you know what handiwork used to be? You had a little pillow or something you were making and you do stitching and stitching yeah. and stitching. Well, stitching is line upon line, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, and also stitching when you do handiwork like that. I hope everybody knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When you go in and embroider or something like that, mm -hmm. you put the needle in and you bring it out and you tie it. Everything yeah. is tied up. Everything's yeah. tied up. Every line is tied up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now that's showing you something. That's his handiwork. Every line that he set up in the creation, he tied it up with a principle. Every single one of them. Isn't that sweet? Yes, Read. Yes. Day unto day uttereth speech. Day unto day. And look at, I was thinking here that all these days, because when you look at a word like a day, you can look at the days of creation. You know, there's seven days and there's seven dispensations, seven. Or you can look at it as just a day. But these are the days that Yahweh was talking about. That's why he set up the seven days of creation. So you know how many days was in the, in the uh, ages. You understand that? So day unto day uttereth speech. What is that speech? 
What's the speech that's going to be day to day? Yahshua shows his death, burial, and resurrection in Adam, and he shows his death, burial, and resurrection in Noah. Day unto day. What is that speech? Isn't that right? Read. Yeah. Read. And night unto night. And night unto night. Because these both ages, night, this was in the night, this was in the night. Night unto night showeth knowledge. Yeah. That's, where the, that's where all the knowledge came from. Point now, Yahshua the Messiah. Day unto day utter a speech. Night unto night showeth knowledge. Read. There is no speech nor language uh -huh. where their voice is not heard. That's right. There's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Now I want to show you one more thing. I could keep going, but I want to show you something about another witness on these ages. Because, you know, if you look at the witnesses about the ages, you'll understand. You'll, this will be your part of your profound knowledge about this. All right. So I want you to see something here. What I want to show you is the uh, uh, seasons according to the ages. And this is so pretty. It's so simple. And it's so cool. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> this is a great teaching. Please come back. <laughs> All right. So anyway, right here, you have the fall of Adam. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. So that's the fall of the year. Mm -hmm. Then you have a long winter where everything was dead and buried. That's long. Did you ever hear of having a short summer? In a long winter? If you live in the north, that's what they call it up there. Oh, it was a long winter. <laughs> Short summer. Yeah. Long winter. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. And look how the ages are. These are the last two, two days in the creation. Short. In fact, uh, um, John on the Isle of Pamas, he calls it a little season. Mm -hmm. These last two days, were the little, he's going to be loose, a little season. Last two days, see? All right, anyway. So you got this long, that's your, that's your burial. And there's some things that happen in here, especially in the north. There's, I don't know if you've ever studied any of this stuff, but you have lines of stratification that has to happen in the wintertime in order for the grass and all the things that are going to come up back up, bring it back to life. But one thing that I was looking at back in here is, you know, and some of you have probably, oh, thank you. Some of you have probably seen a bulb that's planted in the ground. Well, some of them you leave in there and they stay through the winter. Yes. Yes. They're, they're alive in there. I mean, they get their nutrients that come down in the summertime through the leaves, but they'll stay locked up in there. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, you can liken them under them prophets or the people that believed in Yahshua the Messiah back in here. They were down in there. Yeah. had everything they needed so that when he came through his death, burial, and resurrection they ascended with him or they sprung right up out of the ground with him. <laughs> that's sweet. Yeah. So that, that's what happened there. See, And then you have Yahshua going through his death, burial, and resurrection. That's springtime. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? So you got springtime. Then right in here you're going to have the picking of the fruits. All this age, the picking of the fruits. Isn't that right? And there was verses about the fr fruits in the scripture reading. See, So you got the picking the fruits all the way through. And right here at the end of this age, you got that great gleaning of the fields or the gathering together of all that's been done. You understand that? In all the ages. So that's going to be that's like your harvest time. In the beginning, you got your first things, and up north, I don't, you know, I don't know how you'd work it down here because I don't do it, and I don't know. But um, in the, you have your first fruits, so like right in June, when the right as soon as it's sun enough, you get strawberries. Mm -hmm. See, so you got your first fruits here, and down here at the end is when you gather up all the things out of your garden. See. So anyway, he's gathered us into his garden. I want to tell you one more thing. This is a sweet little example that I was given. And this is not on the ages, but it's about birds. And you know, I love talking about birds because I, and I love the birds down here. And one of the things that I was reading, I was reading a transcript and Dr. Kinley used the words, Yahshua has displayed himself throughout the whole creation. And when he used that word displayed, it took me to birds, mm -hmm. the way that they display their feathers. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, just, just think about this, it's so cool. You have those birds that, you, you know, you can look at it. I just got to tell you a quick, quick, quick story. My husband one time, I, he used to work on the farm after he got home from work, and he was always really tired, and I'd be watching TV at night late, 
and I'd say, sit and watch TV with me. And he'd like, what are you watching? I said, you know, I don't know, something. Oh, I can't watch one more bird mating program. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I like to watch. <laughs> and so anyway, you have these birds that display their feathers, and feathers can be likened unto witnesses. Give me one verse, verse Psalms 90 and 1. I think it is. So they display their feathers, right? And they display those feathers to attract a mate. So they're all displaying their feathers up and down. You know how they dance around and make all kinds of motions and you know, they display themselves. And look, this was another thing I saw. You know how we do this sign now, like this, heart, love? Yeah. Yes. On a lot of birds, you have a heart right here on yes. their chest. Mm -hmm. So they're showing that love to their mate. Yes. When they're, that's what it's there for. It's a big red chest on this little yes. teeny bird. Okay. You know what I mean? He's showing. Okay. Go ahead and read. Uh, uh, Psalms 90 and 1. Uh -huh. Oh Yahweh, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Okay, read. Before the mountains were. Okay, 91 and 1. 91 and 1. I think. 91 and 4. Or 94. It doesn't matter. 90 and 4. Okay. For a thousand years in thy sight. No, 4. 91 and 4. 91 and 4? Thank you. Okay. He shall cover thee with his feathers. He's going to cover you with his feathers. Read. And under his wings shall thou trust. And under his wings shall you trust. And you can liken those wings of Yahshua unto witnesses. Mm -hmm. Under those and wings that's shall that's you trust. Read. Uh -huh. His truth shall be thy shield. His truth shall be your shield. And, and look buckler. at uh, the feathers are a shield. They're, they're, they're a bird's protection. Isn't that right? In fact, a friend of mine that lives on a farm up there, she's gone now, but she... She was in class, a girl that died in class. She said that she remembered a fire in the field and a, a hen going out there and covering up her chickens till she burned it up. Her chicks. Mm. Now that's something. She, but she protected them with her feathers. So those feathers are like your witnesses, see? Mm. And that he's showing and he's displaying all these beautiful witnesses. And he's come to the nest. <laughs> come to my nest. It's good, it's good here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank everyone for coming to study with us. Thank you, especially to our visitors. Come back and study with us. We're here every Sunday from 11 to 1 and every Friday in the same location from 7.30 to 9.30 and we have a Wednesday Zoom class if you're interested in joining us live on our Zoom you can contact me to get that link and that, that Zoom is from 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. Let us all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last few verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. hallelujah. hallelujah.